Okay, so time for another uniform overview. To, you know, so as we can see in real life what we've been trying to paint. We have Neil. Neil, thanks for joining us. No problem. John, what does Neil come as, and then maybe Neil can take us through the, the details of it all. Well, as I don't know this just as well as Neil does, uh, he is British Glider Infantry of the Royal Ulster Rifles. Uh -huh. So it's very much a, a home unit for yeah. us in Northern Ireland, but these are the boys that came in on gliders during D-Day and fought through Normandy and further on. So, yeah. Neil, I'm going to hand it over to you because you know this better than I do. Okay. Um, as John says, I am a, a member of the Royal Ulster Rifles, 1st Battalion. And as you can tell by the beret, it's an airborne unit. We were originally a normal ground-based rifle regiment. Um, as you can tell by the cap badge, that's why there's a green square behind that, just to denote that we were rifles at one point. Um, as you can see, I have uh, the standard British airborne garb on me, wool trousers. Um, Dennis and Smock, I have a wool blouse underneath this as well, um, with the usual scrim scarf. Um, everything that I have is standard infantry equipment, yeah. same as what any other guy would have. If your brain pouches for carrying. So the, the, the standard power units, if there is such a thing as a standard power unit, would they have been wearing basically the same Pretty much get exactly up? the same as I'm wearing now. Mm -hmm. um, now what is a Denison smock? Well basically a Denison smock is it's an over the head type uh, camouflage smock. Basically that's this this would be the forerunner to the DPM smocks that the army wears now. The only difference is they're obviously like a coat they full zip from top to bottom. Yeah. This doesn't, the zip only comes halfway down mm -hmm. and you pull it on over your head. It was A, to give the guys a bit more concealment out in the field and also to keep them a bit warmer as well. Mm -hmm. Now, to be honest, didn't really need it for warmth because when you're wearing layers plus wool and all the rest of it, you're going to push fire back to. Yeah. Um, but as I say, everything else, um, pattern 37 webbing. Now, granted, it's not exactly field orientated because depending on what kind of shows I would do, I need, like to keep it clean. Yes. So that's why the brasses and all are shining at the moment because mm -hmm. I keep it all clean. But, um, blank old KG3. Um, it's 1944 green, um, so it darkens it down because obviously, as you can see there, that's the normal colour that it would have been. Yeah. So it's quite a lot lighter. Um, maybe see it better on that. That's the sort of khaki tan that that will come in originally before when the guys get issued that. Uh -huh. And then take that and blango it down to a green. But what's blango? Blango was basically, it's like a, it comes in something the size of a, of a shoe polish tin. Yeah. And it's a, it's a paste. Uh -huh. And you take a toothbrush, we drop a water and scrub that and then you would basically use the toothbrush. Now why were they trying to darken that down? Was it purely for to reduce visibility? Or? Reduce visibility also it's supposed to help look after the cotton as well because I mean everything apart from the uniform being wool this is, this is basically cotton Yes, yeah. it helps waterproof it as well. Right um, so it had a, a preservative quality. Yeah. Yes then. exactly because yeah. I mean at the end of the day this if you're out and about in the field and um, you know if one guy says duck you're not going to care about your gear. You're going to hit the ground like a sack of spots. Yeah. You know, and it also helps protect the gear. I mean, you can see from from where you're going to get lines and stuff around the corners. And things. Well, this is interesting, John, because this all looks like dry brush to me. You yeah. Know? It's like <laughs> if you can get the the uh, a reasonable shade of green. You know, what what kind of green is that, John? Is that is that kind of like an olive green again? I'm yeah, looking at. It's but it's definitely with a with a kind of like a bony colored yeah. uh, dry brush. Now let's talk a little bit about the camo pattern on this. Yeah. This is quite a complex camo pattern. It is. Yeah. The base color color of it, um, I believe, is the khaki, the yeah. lighter color. Um, and originally when these were manufactured, the guys would come along with paintbrushes. Mm -hmm. that, that's why it goes streaky like that. The guys yeah. just come along and literally they have a massive table with the fabric on it before these are ever put together as garments. And they basically just take a long brush and just slap it on any which mm -hmm. way in fashion to try and darken it down. So you have probably um, dark khaki as the base layer, you have brown, um, and there's also green, and when the two mix, it kind of goes almost to a black yes. in between that as well. Um, as I say, the, the, because each section of fabric was painted by hand and painted differently, no one two smocks are going to look alike. Mm -hmm. You know, So if the guys say, these two look different, it doesn't matter. Because yeah. they probably were in essence anyway. Um, and in terms of replicating that, John, that's, that's basically just blobs and strokes yeah. Yeah, to, to, to get so. that effect. So, yeah. But it's very difficult at 28 mil scale to get just how intricate this pattern is. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you'll find a lot of the guys that we have at the boot camp are just blopping, like blotching it out and just trying to get little extra details wherever they can. Mm -hmm. And if you get a basic pattern of that down correctly, it doesn't matter what else you do with it. Yeah. As long as the colours are down right and the colours look well, correct. Can we turn you around just to see mm -hmm. around the back? Yeah. Okay, so 
And the back, there's... Uh, this, this is my hover sack here. This that's a hover sack. 37 uh -huh. small pack. And then there's a gas mask case underneath that. Yep. Now, some guys may have had this slung over the shoulder like a bag. Just mm -hmm. to be truthfully honest, a lot of the guys, the first thing they did was ditch the gas mask. They, they ditched the gas mask, yeah. To, I have a first aid pack in here. Yeah. So, I mean, if I need to get at it quickly, I can reach around. a quick release buckle on that. We'll just turn you around because you, you, so we can hear you. So there's a quick release quick buckle, release on, buckle it. on that. Just simply pull it and pull out the first aid kit. Yeah. Now obviously there's a first aid pouch on my hip there as well. Mm -hmm. So if I can't get to that in a hurry, I can still get to the one behind the back end. Yeah. Um, um, also, so if you're lying face down wounded, there's a good chance that somebody coming exactly. along to help you, you know, will yeah. find If you're lying you. flat, yeah. you can't get your hand under that. I can yeah. do it behind it. A lot of guys you'll see as well on the helmets, they may have had the field dressing inside the helmet net or tied to it. Uh -huh. So the guys all have to do is pull it off. Put it, yeah. on, um, put it on use it. It. now just before we get to helmets and stuff i want mm -hmm. to talk about the trousers okay so these are made of the same material as the yeah. as the, the this, battle this is called the khaki wool surge uh -huh. um a rather itchy um wool uh it's quite thick um, yeah. you can see maybe on that that's that's fairly fairly thick mm -hmm. it's good at night time obviously because it'll keep you warm if it's quite cold as well it is fairly wind resistant as well on a summer's day it's not your friend. No, I can you're, imagine. You're sweating buckets on this thing. Yeah. Um, but the guys would have been issued this. Para trousers, this, this is the standard infantry trouser I have on. Yeah. Because a lot of guys did not get the dedicated para version because it would have had um, a pocket for um, a Fairborn Sykes dagger maybe or something like that. Mm -hmm. so, that, that was the, the knife for cutting cord and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. A um, bit like the German gravity knife. And yeah. also, this being the standard one, it's not mined. The para trousers had like a chamois leather in there, mm -hmm. which fine in practice, but as soon as it got wet, of course, it soaked the water like a sponge. You know, and got heavy. And, got heavy. and they, they, they didn't have like chargers with, with a camouflage pattern or anything, was it? They did and they didn't. They had what was called the windproof smock or camouflage windproof smock, yeah. which was more or less the same as this and a slightly lighter cotton. Um, I think a seven ounce cotton mm -hmm. with a hood on it and a drawstring yeah. and the same in the trousers as well. Most of the time it was only snipers got that because obviously they needed ultimate concealment in order to get to do what they were supposed to be doing. Yes. Now you can see pictures of guys in Italy wearing these in tan, brown, um, almost near black by the time they got it covered in mud and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. But as I say it would have been a lot darker than that, more yeah. of a greeny colour. But to be honest, the mainstream um, airborne service and also the line infantry would have been issued mm -hmm. either with this or just normal wool trousers. And then just down at the bottom we have the black boots and... and it's pattern 37 gaiters as well. Gators. You can see that some of them have brass buckles on the side. Now not all of them. Some of them might even have leather tabs on it as well so you can mm -hmm. take a pick. Now granted these aren't exact replicas of the ammo boot. They are modern ones it's simply because they're they, Originals have hobnails in them. Yeah, trying to walk on a tile floor and hobnails. Not, not advisable. <laughs> click 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 click. <laughs> um, it's kind of like akin to walking on an ice rink in your shoes. Yeah, your feet just want to go that way. Mm. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, well, let's swap the hat for a second yeah. because um, you have the the helmet. Now this is the Mark One um, British Para helmet. Um, it's almost the same as the Fashion Maker helmet, where it's it's basically it's. It's not as um, flat looking as a Tommy helmet. Would yes, because the Tommy helmet is quite rim, flat and had a big rim. Yeah. yeah. So what they had to do, because they were afraid of the, it's obviously not that razor edge you're going to cut your hand, but when the parachute opens and your risers are going above your head, yeah. they were afraid that the edge of the helmet could snap the risers. Mm -hmm. So they've basically taken it, trimmed it off. Yeah. They've made it slightly deeper because obviously it, it's a you know the Tommy helmet would maybe only come to about there. Yeah. And um, they've put a small brim around it. And then they have lined it inside with a bit of chamois leather around that for comfort. And then obviously you have your chin strap coming around with two buckles on the side, loop through, and that's your helmet on. Mm -hmm. um, I have actually model paint on that to darken it down. Yeah. That would be, if it means anything to anybody, it's British dark green. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have basically gone over it, put a PVA glue to waterproof it, put the helmet it on, and then that's just hessian strips cut and tied into that to try yeah. and break up the helmet in it. Because um, a lot of, you know, if you're standing in a bush or wherever you may be, you want to try and break out the outline yes, of the helmet to try and make it look a bit more uh, unobtrusive. Yeah. Um, but that was basically, a lot of guys actually only wore these coming in. They mm -hmm. took them off and there's a mark of prestige, the barrier came out and the barrier went off. Yeah, um, and fought on the berry. And fought yeah. on the berry because this is not ballistically impervious to bullets. 
This was the helmets in that reality were only designed for shrapnel. Yeah. To try and keep you from getting bonked on the head by an 88 fragment or something like that. A, a, a rifle bullet or even a handgun fired at close range will perforate this helmet. Yeah. So guys were like, I don't really want to die wearing my helmet because A, it's not going to do me an awful lot of good anyway. Yeah. Um, a lot of CEOs frowned on this kind of thing. They said, you must wear your helmet. We're taking mm -hmm. too many cars at least. The guys just didn't bother. Yeah. It's like, listen, I'm the one in the trench fighting. You sort off. <laughs> so, um, so that's it. And then we come to the business end. Yep. Um, of the British soldier. This is the normal battle rifle that was handed out, made in their hundreds of thousands. This is a 303 caliber uh, 10 shot bolt action rifle. Mm -hmm. This served with, this is a, a number four, um, the fourth iteration of the, the, the rifle. Um, these would have been. How many iterations did it go up to? You have the number four and then one more, which was the number five jungle rifle, yeah. which was a slightly modified where they cut the front down. Um, took most of the wood away and put a flash hider on the end to try and lighten it up. Yeah. Um, but essentially the same gear. Yeah. You know, the same working internals and all the rest of it. Um, so that's the rifle pulled back. You can see into the the magazine there. Mm -hmm. um, and as I say, it's obviously you can only fire as quickly as you can. Pardon me. You can only fire as quickly as you can. Yeah. You know, and do that. Now they had what was called the Mad Minute. Uh -huh. um, where soldiers would use their little finger or their third finger yep. on the trigger and use this for the bolt. Now I can't do it because yeah. I'm, I'm left-handed, so I'll be used well, to. Well, I was about to ask: Did they make left-hand versions of no, these no. of these Everything, weapons? They're no, all everything's right-handed. Because to be honest, left-handers is five percent of the population. Yeah, um, probably even less at that time. Mm -hmm. um, I have used this left-handed. Um, the guy, I can't remember his character name in Saving Private Ryan, the sniper, yeah. used his spring feed left handed. Mm -hmm. It can be done, yeah. you just need to take a bit more careful or effort over it to make sure you don't catch your cuff or something. On it. Yeah. But I mean, it, it can be done, it's, you know, it's, it's simply a case of that. Yeah. Now, it won't be as quick on the trigger as a right handed person, uh -huh. but I feel more natural with that. Yes. You know, but it's, it's for horses, for course. Um, so that's, that's basically that. The only other thing, as well, as part of my rig is this the pig stick bayonet mm -hmm. which you fit on the end now this wasn't particularly uh, popular with the troops because you couldn't use it for anything else but stabbing people yes quite handy you would think yes you know um but you can't open a can of beans with that no it's you extra know. weight isn't it's it it's extra really? weight now they did bring in what was called a number nine bayonet for this uh -huh. which had the same embossed fitting on the end of it but a blade yes but very few and far between so this was pretty much and to be honest, you can't find an awful lot on number nines, evidently so, because there weren't that many of them made. Yeah. Um, but as I say, that is uh, the end of it. So um, the Mark V Sten also had that fitting on it, so it could fit the big yeah. sticker bayonet. But that, that's basically it. Um, I can't think of anything else. Well, that's great. Neil, look, thank you very much for that. You're very welcome. Okay, guys, so th there you have it. That's, uh, that's your kind of uh, airborne British unit and uh, what they look like. I've got to say, I'm finding all of this fascinating. Right, we're going to try and come back with uh, maybe another one or two of these over the course of the weekend. And um, we have another couple of uniforms, I believe, that we can have a look at. So stay tuned for that.